third level of death. We must reach the third level of death. You can't die, you don't make it. Does everybody get it? You can't die, you don't make it. You got to die to yourself in every area. Jesus commanded, deny yourself, pick up the cross and follow. So many people are stuck and bound in the first chamber for their whole life and never able to get out. Calling themselves Christian. Oh, you can be a Christian in the first chamber and never come out to reach the second or third chamber. Always working out your salvation. Never able to be free. Is everybody okay? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hallelujah. Who's your worst enemy? You are. Don't blame the devil for all your stupid choices. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 4. How many of you know the world is in chaos right now? <laughs> many people don't know which way to go. They're bound by fear. 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 Fear is gripping many people. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest. You know how many people have never entered the rest of the Lord? They think that a certain day is the day of rest. It's a relationship with him that you're in rest all the time. Rest means you're not in survival mode. You're in surrender mode. You're at a rest all the time. You're anxious for nothing. Hello? Anxious is fear. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them. Did not what? Profit them. Not being mixed with what? Faith in those who heard it. They even heard it, but they didn't mix it with faith. You know why? Because they just kept it in their mind, not their heart. The heart is an absorption, but it only absorbs in faith. Because its desire is to do the will of God. Verse 3. For we who have believed, which, what's the word believe mean? Followed. So many people say they're believers, but not followers. They might follow for a few minutes. Then they lose it. For we who have followed, or do enter that rest, as he said, so I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all of his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of what? Because of what? Disobedience. So obedience is what allows you to process and proceed forward. When you are in disobedience or rebellion, you go back. You don't go forward. Because you fall into survival mode, not surrender. You lose rest and you come in fear. Why? Because you still want control. Because who wants control? You do. You will never gain the favor of the Lord. Never. Because he can't trust someone that wants control. He can only trust someone that surrenders control. Verse 7. Again, he designates a certain day saying to David, Today, after such a long time, as, as this has been said, if you will what? Hear. Not listen. Hear. What does hear say? Hear says, I'm going to take what you have. I'm going to apply it to my life. I'm going to make it a part of my life. And I'm going to put it in my heart, not just in my mind. I'm going to hear it and use it. Today, if you will hear his voice, obey it, do not harden your hearts. Why? Because rebellion is hardening of your heart. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not have afterward had spoken to another day. There remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. 
Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same, same example of what? Disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and as the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him, to whom we must give account. Seeing then that we have a high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we, have not, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come what? Boldly. Boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This is a throne of of grace the throne of grace every chamber of the tabernacle of God now there's three chambers there's the outer court there's the holy place and the most holy place write it down so you got it because you're gonna have to connect with each one there's the outer court there's the holy place and there is the most holy place each chamber has a specific anointing a level of death and a throne also each chamber has a function 1 Samuel chapter 2. Everything revolves around two things. The tabernacle and the seven feasts of the Lord. And, and I prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. Let's speak this. This is a powerful prayer. My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. No one is holy like the Lord, nor there, for there is none beside you, nor is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and those who stumble are girded with strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, and the hungry have ceased to hunger. Even the barren have borne seven, and she has many children, has become feeble. The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of what? Glory. Hmm. This is known as the second chamber. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. He has set the world upon them. He will gird the feet of his saints, but the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength no man shall prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. From heaven he will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth, and he will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Wow. So we see that there's a throne of grace. Remember, grace is not God's favor. Say it with me. Grace is not God's favor. You earn God's favor. Everybody get it? Grace is what? God's plan of escape. Write it, believe it, receive it. Because there's a lot of stuff out there that is false doctrine. Trying to tell everybody, once you're saved, you're always saved by grace. You are not saved by grace. You are saved by cooperating with the plan that God has given us. Amen? Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 8, starting at verse 1. Now this is the main point of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the what? Majesty in heaven. The throne of what? Heaven. Three thrones. Three chambers. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true what? 
tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it is necessary that this one also has something to offer. For if he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law, who serve the copy and the shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, see that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Now remember the word Egypt is also known as the Babylonian system, the world system. Were you taken out of the Babylonian system? Yes. You were on, we are living under Egypt. Because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After these days, says the Lord, I will put my laws, my words, in their thoughts, in their minds. And write them on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Do you understand that when an individual only has, lives out of the mind and not out of the heart with the with God, he is truly not his. There's lack of relationship. There's lack of, in other words, intellect can definitely destroy individuals. So much intellect. I know a lot of intellectual individuals. Man, they got a lot of knowledge, a lot of degrees, all kinds of stuff. They've been living in school for most of their life. And they're idiots. No understanding of the true reality of Christ. They still don't know who they truly are, wanting to be someone not knowing that they are someone. Living a life in the outer court, never reaching the holy place. Still being attached to the things of the world, promoting their own life, living for themselves. He said, none of them shall teach his neighbor and none of his brother, saying, know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least of them to the grace of them. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. And that, he says, a new covenant he has made, the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete, growing old, is ready to vanish away. We are in a new covenant with the Lord, thank God. Why? What is the basic foundation of the new covenant? It's repentance. It's what? repentance. See, they had to af offer a sacrifice of an animal for the nation to be forgiven. But it was just a covering. Now, because of Christ Jesus, through the blood of his, his shed blood, you and I have the opportunity to activate the blood. You activate the blood of Christ in your life by the words that come out of your mouth. It's called repent. I am truly sorry for the things I've said, that I've thought, and that I've agreed with, and that I've acted on. I'm sorry for every time I've offended you. That activates the blood. You are then washed by the blood of the Lamb. And you get to walk out of the puddle of affliction into a whole new reality. With a refreshing and a newing. Why does the word say, repent that you may be refreshed, renewed in the presence of God. Why? Because Please grab hold of this. The blood of Christ Jesus always goes before the Spirit. When the, the Spirit can never go before the blood. Everybody got it. That's why Jesus couldn't pour out the Spirit until his blood was shed. And when you don't repent, the Spirit backs off from you. Pride will push him away. And he'll wait for you to humble yourself. And if you refuse to, he'll stay away. And let me tell you who will replace him, a familiar spirit, a demon, a familiarity. And he will pretend he's the Holy Spirit and mislead you all the way to hell. Oh, 
hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 24. Holy Spirit is releasing today. Let me tell you, we are around the corner of things. Many people are going to miss the opportunities God has prepared for them. Psalm 24, verse 1. Again, I want to repeat, the tabernacle of God is made of three chambers. If you've never seen the tabernacle, there is a video called the tabernacle. In fact, you can go to Eternal Library. Dot org and we have the video up there, I believe, don't we? Yeah, it's called the tabernacle. And you can understand the three tabernacles, the three chambers, I mean. The, the tabernacle is the eternal port home. Nobody goes outside the tabernacle to get home. Nobody. Everybody travels through the tabernacle. That is the eternal port. That's why the veil was ripped. Many people have been taken to heaven, have seen a, a tunnel. It's the tabernacle, the eternal port all the way home. And they've been led by a light. They see a light. In fact, many of them, if you listen, to, we've got a video called uh, Demons and Devils or Placebo. And there was a pastor that died, and he was taken to heaven. And on his way, he went through the second uh, heaven, and he saw because that's where the demonic forces are. And he saw all these demons and all this stuff there. And he said they were outside of the portal. He saw many people traveling in and out. But when we got to the throne of God, he got rebuked, destroyed, basically, emotionally. God rebuked the bejeebies out of him. And I really believe because he was preaching once saved, always saved. And he begged for his life and asked to come back. The Lord removed him from his throne room. And he begged, humbled himself, and the Lord brought him back and hugged him like a son. Because that's the forgiveness of God. His love is unconditional. We desire something. Humility and humbleness. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Have we done first verse one yet? <laughs> Psalm 24, praise be to God. I'm just, listen, we're just going to let the Spirit lead because God is preparing something marvelous for us. Marvelous. And so many people are so caught up in themselves and their life. I need to get my life together. Man, you, you gave your life away. He bought you. You're not your own. How dare you? How dare you think that you own your own life and make your own decisions? Foolish ones. Glory. Verse 1. Let's speak it. The earth of the Lord is the Lord's and all that is what? All its full, all fullness. And the world and those who dwell on therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who may stand in his holy place? Hmm. That's his tabernacle, isn't it? Yeah. He who has what? Clean hands and a what? Pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to what? An idol. Can you be the idol? You betcha, and we're the worst ones. Nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who what? Seek him who seek your face. Must clean hands, pure heart, reaching the third, third chamber of the tabernacle, connecting to the throne. Many, again, many believers have not come out of the first chamber. They're still in the first chamber, working out their salvation. Matthew 16, 24, please. Then Jesus said to his what? 
his disciples. How many of y'all want to be a disciple? See, many people don't want to be a disciple. They just want to get free from drugs, alcohol, or get the blessings from God. <laughs> Does everybody get that? You know, they're not willing to be a disciple. Oh, they say they want to be, and they've attempted to be, but they're not willing to pay the price to be. See, everybody goes through Holy Ghost boot camp. If you ain't willing to go through Holy Ghost boot camp, you ain't going to get to the next part. That's where the shaking and quaking and squeezing comes. That's where you are put on the potter's wheel. And as the Lord begins to mold you, many people run off the potter's wheel. I'm willing to do everything, everything, anything, anything. Not now, though. Maybe tomorrow. But don't do that. No, don't take that. You can't take that. They got a lot of butts. See, they live butt ministry. They're not the head. They're still the, involved in the tail. Glory. And Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires, if you have a desire to come after me, he says, let them do what? God does not associate with self. Self is offensive to him. Why? Because it's the offspring of Satan. You were born in darkness. You were born corrupt. Thank God you weren't accountable. <laughs> That's why you must be what? Born again. It's plain and simple. It's common sense. There's a reason why you got to be born again. What did Jesus tell all of the Pharisees and Sadducees? You are of the devil. Your father, who is a liar, you are of your father, the devil, he told them. Snap. That's why you were called a little devil when you were a kid. Hello, you little devil. You, man, why, why are kids so disrespectful and disobedient? Because they're the offspring of Satan. They need to get born again. But their parents who should be born again should be controlling them and teaching them how to overcome self until they're filled with the Spirit. Believe me, when my daughter came out of the womb, we laid hands on her. Hallelujah. We're still waiting for the fullness now. But we know it's going to come. Let him deny himself. Self, 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 self. You can beautify self. You can paint self, you can dress self, but you can't deny his character. There's a battle over self and the new man every day. Every day you wake up, there he is, or there she is, wanting to take control. That's the trinity, me, myself, and I, of darkness. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. Let him deny himself and take up his cross. When you pull a cross out of the ground, what does it turn into? A sword. That means you got to fight. And without a fight, you can't follow. So many casualties of war because they lose the ability to maintain their fight. You are to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Verse 25, see, you can't follow. What's the first request of following Jesus? Denying yourself. You can't have a button there, and you can't blame someone else for your stuff. Forever desires to save his life will what? Oh, snap, will lose it. But whoever loses his life will. For my sake, we'll find it. See, if you're not attentive, if you're not paying attention, amen, if you're not sensitive to these things, you'll miss it. You'll, you won't be able to deny yourself. You've got to be attentive to these things. You've got to be alert to these things. That's promoting self. That's promoting self. That's promoting self. That's promoting self. My tongue is promoting self. My thoughts are promoting self. Anything that promotes self is a defense, is an offense to God. Does everybody understand that? 
Verse 26, for what profit is a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in, in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each one according to his work. As surely I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Jesus explains the three chambers of the tabernacle and three levels of death to obtain eternal life. Deny yourself. First chamber. Pick up the cross and fight. You can't fight without the anointing. Second chamber. Does everybody get it? And the third chamber is fellowship in the spirit with him. Each one has a function. The outer court is known as salvation. The holy place is priesthood. The most holy place is warrior. Matthew 26, verse 36. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to what? Death. Stay here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Do you see that this, what he was going through? He knew what he had to do. Come on. He knew. He knew because he knows the things of the future. He knew what he had to fulfill. But he was, he, he got, you know, again, man, he was battling within him. He was battling big time. Father, if it's possible, you know, I mean, just, if, if we, you know, is it possible <laughs> to pass this cup by me? You know, for a mighty split second, <laughs> you got to think about something. If, if he didn't do what he did, everybody would have been killed and destroyed. They would have just erased, erased everything, started all over again. Ne <laughs> but he said, nevertheless, I say to you, <laughs> glory to God, if it is possible, this just constantly, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus just entered the first chamber. He was cleaning out the chambers of the tabernacle. See, everybody says Jesus died on the cross, and I'm not denying that. But he first died in the garden. See, he had to cleanse the garden. Everything that was in the Garden of Eden, he had to cleanse that too. Everything that happened there. Remember, when Jesus died, he cleansed past, present, and future. He cleanses that for me and you. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Then he came to the disciples, verse 40, and found them what? Sleeping. And said to Peter, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? Couldn't you battle with me for an hour? Couldn't you just hang with me for an hour? Couldn't you intercede? Watch and pray, lest you enter what? Into temptation. Man, you compromise your prayers. Temptation is knocking on the door. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, the second time he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. Now he's getting stronger and stronger. Now he just cleansed the second chamber. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them. <laughs> and
and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of the sinners. Rise and let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Jesus had to pray three times. Spirit, soul, and body in three chambers of the tabernacle. Access and clean all chambers with his blood so that there can be salvation, priesthood, and warrior fulfillment. The third level of death to self, each Jesus had to die, each chamber, boom, to himself. And you notice the more he died, the more he got stronger. See, there's a place... And the third level of death to self, where we, we are living a life beyond self. So many people cannot live a life beyond self. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace and God's plan that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you've heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men or women who will be able to teach others also, those who are faithful. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of his life or himself because you'll lose. You won't have victory. The enemy will laugh at you. Why? Because you are working out of the flesh, not out of the spirit. You are working out of the soul, not out of the mind, not out of the spirit. And the enemies are spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. That he may, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of his life or this life or himself, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Uh, and also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules, regulations, and the submissions that God has laid before them. The hardworking farmer must first partake of the crops. Consider what I say, may the Lord give you understanding in all these things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. For which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. These are requirements. Amen? Die with him, live with him, endure, reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind him of these things and charge him before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God as a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. Oh, hallelujah. They will increase to what? More ungodliness. He said, die to yourself. <laughs> Third chamber. Third level of death to self. We must reach that area. It doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. But denying yourself is an everyday experience. God allows the challenges to come before you. So you can deny yourself. Colossians 3 verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts, your minds on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died, or if you died, <laughs> your life is hidden with Christ in God. 
when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him, where? In glory. Therefore put to death your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Remember, this letter is written to the church of believers, not unbelievers. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived with them. But now you yourselves are to put off these things. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the what? New man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free. But Christ is all in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, tenderness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, throw it in the garbage. Even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you also were called to one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing, the admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do also in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Our, your life is hidden in Christ only if you're dead. Other than that, your life is still in you. James chapter 4. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your what? Desires for pleasure that war in your members. You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. And when you do ask, you don't receive because you ask it amiss that you may spend it on yourself of selfish ambitions. Look, there's nothing wrong with buying clothes and this and that, whatever. But, when the, but that is, when that is more of a priority than God's presence, when that is a more of a priority than the things of God, when that's more of a priority than tithes and offerings, when that's more of a priority, then it's offensive to God. He wants us to prosper. He wants us to look good. He wants us to be healthy. He wants us to be a sign of wonder, but he wants us to be clothed with his presence more than anything else. Hello? Then what does he say? And now he's explaining your ungodly pleasures, the adulterers and the adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? In other words, God hates those things. Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Well, what is a friend of the world? Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. There, there are many believers who are enemies of God and don't even know it. Or do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace, more of God's plan. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud. God resists the what? Proud. But he gives grace to the what? Humble. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he'll what? Flee from you. Submit to the rules of engagement. His laws. <laughs> In your memory, his authority is placed over you. Submit. Or you can't resist the influence of the devil. You can't resist the influence of the flesh. Everybody, everybody, you, you can't until you're fully submissive. Why? Because if you can't submit to authority, you have none. And the demons know that. They know whether you're submissive or disobedient or rebellious. And they wait 
and they wait for a specific time. They come when you least expect them. They don't come to you and say, hey, man, I'm going to tempt you today. They come when you least expect them. Hosea chapter 4. If you think this message is for you, it is. It's for all of us. Amen? Why? Because God is preparing something wonderful. And he says these little things that level the whole lump are interfering with our life of receiving things that he has for us. I'm expecting great things to begin to manifest here very shortly. We are coming to the fulfillment of the Shemitah. The completion of the year of Jubilee. The beginning of the new year, according to the Hebrew calendar. Where God on that day judges all humanity. He gives them ten days to repent, to atonement. And he will release the things. You know, the Bible says after you have completed the assignment... He releases the promise. So many people are begging for the promise when they haven't fulfilled what he asked them to do. Hosea 4, 6. What's that say? Everybody there? My people are what? They're destroyed. They're wiped out. For lack of what? Knowledge. Now, he's not talking about carnal knowledge. He's talking about the knowledge and relationship with the Lord. He's talking about his guidelines and rules and regulations, his laws. He's talking about those things that keep us in place and his boundaries. Hey, because you've rejected knowledge, his ways. What's the first thing he says? I will also reject you from being a what? A priest. That's the second chamber. That's the second chamber. He will not allow you into that place. And that's one who ministers to the Lord. It's a, a second anointing. There's an anointing there, and it's called the second level of death. And because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will what? I will what? Come on. Forget your what? That's where the curse comes down, the family line. It's called an iniquity. Because of the things that we've done and rejected of his obedient, uh, being obedient, being rebellious, he says, you can't get close to me. But I'll still talk to you on a distance. I don't want a long distance relationship with the Lord. I want a face-to-face -face one. And he says, because you've done these things, not only will I reject you from being close to me, but I will allow the curse to continue to fall down to your children. And they will pay the price for your disobedience. Does everybody understand this? See, that recycles every third and fourth generation. Even in the new covenant. Until the parents, the forefathers, until we repent for the sins of the forefathers and break these curses off. A priest is the second chamber. Many Christians never made it out of the first chamber of salvation. Nor can they ever become, an, they cannot advance to become warrior because they've not reached the level of, of the second death. And here we want to reach the third level. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 6. Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear but power of love and a sound mind. Man there's, it. there's the fruit of the presence of fear. No power. No love, no sound mind. That means what? Unstable. You are critical of other people. Hello? And you got no power over your emotion. Does everybody get it? Fear. Fear, 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 and fear. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, 
but according to his purpose and grace, which is his plan, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. But now has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher as an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know who I believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I commit to him until that day. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Sound mind, not unstable. An individual that's living out of the mind or out of the emotions, with emotional words, they're always releasing emotional words, no control, choices, bad attitudes. <laughs> Again, they live out of the mind and the soul, not out of the heart of the spirit. Fear is living out of the mind and the soul. There's a continual emotional conflict within. It's an emotional conflict within. There's always that thought, run or stay. Run. I'm just, run means you're going back to the way you used to be. It doesn't mean you're going back to your family, you're going back to whatever. It means you're going back to who you were. Don't let the enemy deceive you. Many people run instead of allowing that challenge to become strong. Does everybody understand that? They run from the emotional conflicts in their memories. And there's emotional impressions that promote rebellion. And, and they're still holding on to these things. And they're still holding on to bitterness and unforgiveness. They're still holding on to intellect. Look, at there's people that can memorize the whole Bible and still be idiots. I know a lot of them. Oh, they can beat you up with the word. And they can out quote you scripture. I don't care about the locations of Scripture, to be honest with you. It's the Word that's most important. But when you're in relationship with you, in fact, the Bible says that God has already put His Word in us. Heck, I didn't read the Bible for a period of time, and I knew the Word of God because the Holy Spirit who wrote it lived in me and still does. But there's got to be a communication, a knowing of His voice, and a knowing of His impression. Does everybody understand? Again, many people are still caught in rebellion in the first chamber of the outer court. Many are self-centered, self-righteousness. You know, let me, I get a lot of people that tell me, yes, Christ is the center of my life. Well, when you come to the second level of death, he's no longer the center of your life. He's the head of your life. There's a difference. See, the center means that you revolve around everything. But to be led by the Spirit of God is to be Son of God. I get a lot of people, the Lord's the center of our life. Everything is around the Lord. No, He's to be the head of your life. There's a difference. Does everybody get it? Those who are led by the Spirit of God are called sons of God and daughters of God. Philippians chapter 2. You're working out of salvation into priesthood. Then you're working out of priesthood into warrior. That's what the Bible says working out your salvation means. We must have a desire to reach the third level of death. It's called the master's level. Hallelujah. Philippians 2, verse 1. Let's grow for it. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, 
but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind or these thoughts be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of what? Death, third level of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow, and those in heaven, and those on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, work out of the first chamber of salvation. Then work out of the second chamber of priesthood. Do all things without complaining and disputing. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. And that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine like lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ and that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Be like-minded, working out every chamber into the next. First John chapter 2 and verse 15. And do not what? Love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the what? Lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of self or life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And who's the ruler of the earth, of the world system? Satan. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. That's what's happening right now. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So you don't want to be calling it the loss of the world. That's passing away, because so will you. Amen? Little children is the last hour, and as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they ran out, that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Not over we reach the first level of death. <laughs> all word and no heart. Second Timothy chapter 3, and we'll close here. Desiring to reach the third level of death. Is it a process? Yes. It'd be nice if it just happened instantly. And you could take a pill, but that doesn't work. That's only advertisement from TV. It's not a commercial. This is a reality. Because <laughs> this is where we are right now. The Bible says, but know this in the last days, perilous times will come. We're in them. You can't ask much more perilous times except for the time of tribulation that's coming. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal despisers of what? Good. Traitors, headstrong, haughty. Lovers of pressure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness. Oh, they can pretend it and fake it, but they ain't going to make it. But denying its power. And from such people turn away. For these are the sort that those who creep into households, ministries, and make captive or gullible men and women. And load them down with uh, sins and let away with various what? Lusts. 
They come in as stealth. Always learning and never be able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now Janus and Jairus resisted Moses who do these. So do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt what? Minds, thoughts are contaminated. Disapproved concerning the faith. But they will progress no further for their folly will be made manifest to all as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, and perseverance. Persecutions, afflictions, which happen to be in Antioch, Icium, Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. So can he deliver you out of them all? Yes. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. You will be challenged. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Is that happening? But you must continue. You must continue. You must continue. You must endure. And the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which was able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproach, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly, complete, thoroughly equipped for what? Every good work, purpose, and assignment. We are in a time right now where we've got to die more. We can't allow fear to move us out. We can't allow anxiousness to take control. We cannot be led by emotional impressions. When you don't know what to do, what do you do? Nothing. Shut up. Don't react. If you can't respond, be quiet. Wait. Seek counsel. Seek correction. Seek direction. For in a multitude of counsel, there's safety and there's wisdom. Don't try to figure it out by yourself. Get confirmation. This is not a time to be alone. It's a time to gather. It's a time to unite. See, the enemy likes to take that one sheep out of the flock. If he can get you long, alone, lonely and long, uh, alone and long enough, he'll tear you up. Our trust is in the Lord. Our strength is in the Lord. There must be a closer relationship like never before. And it starts with prayer. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Your first call is to become a warrior of prayer. If you can't become a warrior of prayer, you can't become a warrior. You must be a warrior of prayer. You must be a pursuer of your enemies. You must hate evil and quit petting it. You must hate rebellion. You must hate disobedience. Amen? The Word tells you that we're to hate those who defile themselves. We're to hate those things that they promote. But we're to love God's righteousness, His justice, and His judgments. We're to love His Word and His presence. And we must be willing to drop everything at any time to say, yes, Lord. Amen? Praise God. Why? Because we're to be the children of light and the forerunners of His return. I know we are His forerunners. Just like John the Baptist was a forerunner of the Lord's return. And what did he come in? He came in the spirit of Elijah. That means the second mantle is about to be released. And don't miss it. I haven't taught on the second mantle yet, but I'm going to. It's time. Amen. So, Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We ask that you protect the seed that's been imparted in us today. And prepare our hearts for the things that come that we may be close to you like never before. Lord, we repent for anything we've done that's offended you in thought, word, and deed. Again, we ask that you wash us with the blood of the Lamb and heal us with the stripes of Jesus. And refresh us and renew us. 
as we prepare our hearts for communion. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.